In this video, I'm going to talk about the span columns feature in InDesign. So on my screen, I've got a text box that has three columns in it. And I made that change in my properties panel after selecting the box itself. I went down to my text frame options and increased it from one to three by this little icon that looks like three columns or three skinny rectangles next to each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is put paragraph styles on everything because this will make it easier to update and control and it'll keep me nice and consistent. So I'm going to make sure that part of all three of these paragraphs are highlighted. I'm going to open my paragraph styles palette. If you ever lose your styles palette, you can always go to window styles, and then choose which one you need. So I'm going to alter option, click the new symbol, and I'm going to name this one body text because it's for the paragraphs. And I already threw a space after on this, and I was making sure that the text would fit in this box. So it's picking up that feature, and also the type and lighting sizes that I picked. So I can just click OK on that one. And we've also got a title and a subtitle here. So ideally, I want these to stretch all the way across so I don't have this weird alignment of these two columns being the same level as my title. So I'm going to highlight my subtitle. And again, Option on a Mac or Alt click on the new symbol and my paragraph styles. So for my subtitle, I'm going to go into my basic character formats. Uh, make it about four points bigger, and I'm going to choose bold, and then apply that to the type that's highlighted. And then I'll go into my title, do the same um, option or alt click to go right into my paragraph style editor. Call this one title, and I'll make that nice and large, and we'll also go for bold. And then apply that. So in order to get these to stretch across the columns and to not use separate text boxes, typically you want to use as few text boxes as possible, I'm going to use span columns. So I'm going to leave my cursor in my headline I'm going to double click this paragraph style here and I'm going to go to span columns and in the little menu there I'm going to select span and we can see that change is made. We can also do a special space before or after spans. This might be useful if you have a bit more complicated content but it should be respecting the space that we have on the paragraph. So if you had multiple sort of articles like this in one text box, this might be useful to keep your articles apart. So I'll click OK on that. And then I'll do the same thing here just to review. So I'll go into that paragraph style, go to span, and choose span again. And then we can see that also goes across. So there was also an option of how many columns we want to span. So I'll go back to my title. So we'll bring up this window again, go to span columns. So this is what we changed. And if I open up this box, I could tell it to only span two columns, for instance. Now the space here is because my subtitle is allowed to span all the columns. So I'm going to set both of them to two and look at the difference. So I'll click on my subtitle, double click to edit that paragraph style, go to span columns and change that to two. And now that last column can go to the top. You often see this in sort of lower down and below the fold newspaper layouts. So that is span columns. There's also a feature called split columns that you may have seen when I opened that menu and I'll cover that in another video. 